Hey everyone, thank you so much for dropping by and today we'll cover the complete protein and my slides are not even correct. Here you go. Let me remove the video capture. So this is going to be part one of uh, protein, many to come. Uh, but today what I want to cover in protein and I find so important and I never got a straight answer from any nutritionist that I went to see or asked a question. I always got a feedback and say, hey Jean, all you have to do is, you know, vary your food and you're going to be quite okay. You know what? They're right, but it's not an answer that I was looking for. I go, how do I vary my food? What's the food I have to vary? You know, it's like, give me a little bit more detail. But nobody ever got into detail. So I was wondering if anybody always knew, but yeah, um, you know what? I'll cover it. And you know, before I do this, you know the drill, guys. Subscribe, it's gonna help this channel move forward. And if you hit the thumbs up, uh, I heard that YouTube takes a look at that and they say, oh, this is getting important. And they kind of push it forward when they see a same subject being talked somewhere else. So somebody else could probably see my video a little bit more often. And it's gonna be visible on the right hand side when you're taking a look at you know the, these kinds of videos. So if you could help someone else, why not? And by hitting that bell, you will get advised every time that I'm going to be posting up a new video, like the future videos on protein to come. Now, why do I think, without any ado, let's move forward. Why do I think uh, a complete protein is so important? Uh, like I said, I asked so much nutritionists and never got a straight answer or some kind of chart. I had to look it up myself. I had to, you know, find out why. Uh, another thing that pushed me to look into this was um, uh, a grocery store called Igia near near me was holding um, these uh, cooking class for vegan and uh, I go well you know what this is great let's go take a look you know there's three recipes it's like five or seven bucks it's nothing there and um, you know you you could taste test. so we ended up 38 in the class and um, while the teacher was cooking the first recipe, goes, any of you have questions? Nobody raised up their hands, but, you know, since I was into this, I was starting my book, um, I go, hey, um, I got a question, and I don't want to displease anybody, but I got to know, because I want to start living and, you know, redirecting my life towards vegan uh, vegetarian vegetarian or vegan or you know staying away more and more towards the animal uh, food which is not really the case because i'll always eat some fish and you know chicken but uh, that's another story um i go how many of you here are in the vegetarian vegan uh, you know world or that's all they eat out of those 31 raised their hands and the uh, teacher goes uh, why you ask um, I rather not say I was just it's personal no no I'd like to know and you know a lot of people in the class said no 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 I'm gonna hurt people if I'm gonna say why uh, I shouldn't have said that then everybody starts saying just say it we want to know why well I go um, 28 of you are not the weight I want to be. I want to eat vegetarian because I want a healthy weight. But I see a lot of you are uh, have an excess of weight. Teachers said, don't worry about it. It's like, it's so complicated. Most people don't know the right combination of food or eat too much carbohydrates. And the reason for excess, you know, weight of, you know, in this kind of uh, uh, diet or way of eating, not diet, because it's not diet, it's a way of living and eating. So, even more important, I wanna know what the hell it is. Uh, complete protein, uh, meat. If you take what you see there, that last slice cut, take 10, 15% off, and you'll have about 30 grams of protein. Depends on our body, but it always varies from person to person, but an average about 30 grams is what is required to our body maximum per meal before our body starts saying okay I fixed everything and uh, you know everything that I had to fix in your body 
I don't need any more and start stock, you know, stocking it into your, uh, you know, your belly or wherever it puts the, you know, the extra protein and amino acids that it doesn't need. And that's not what you want. You don't want those extra calories. Okay. Um, I'll go much more in detail in that in later videos. Uh, we know the protein is, you know, it's the building blocks of all our body, okay, which I'll explain in a few minutes. It's done, it repairs our tissues, the damaged ones. Uh, if we had a race or we did something or exercised really hard, our body's going to, you know, fix what it needs. But what it has to do first is take that protein, break it down to peptides, and, you know, the, there's a whole process to it. I just want to get down without going into a chemistry course on that. If if you guys request it I will but it breaks it down to a final amino acids and all the different amino acids that it needs to repair your body okay how many different amino acids are there there's quite a few if you guys view my food labeling on protein you see that uh, protein powder that I was talking about that's one of them it has quite a few amino acids completely on the left if you take a look um, do I need them all? Well, actually we need 10, which are the essentials, which our body cannot create. And, um, those we have to find a way to get in our food every day. If we don't, we will be lacking. And if we lack, we will not be able to repair what our body needs to be repairing that day. What are the conditional essentials? Well, you don't need them if you've been sitting around all day front of your computer and then you get up and go watch TV and eat there's no major repair unless you are like um, in the disease state or whatever which I don't want to get into but let's say you ran a 40 mile 40 kilometer uh, race you know a marathon or whatever um, then there will be a lot of damage to your muscles to a lot of parts of your body your body will need some of these and it's going to go get what it needs to be able to fix what it requires to be repaired in your body. So those are conditional, essential, if you need them. So why not find them in food and take them and then get rid of them if you don't need them, you know, in small parts or whatever you need. The non-essentials are there because your body could create them from the essential amino acids. So these 10 amino acids you see on the left, uh, any one of these will be able to create the non-essentials. Okay, so basically you don't need to find them or specifically take them in your food since you could have them in any of your food. The branch change, the BCAAs that we usually hear, nutritionists tell us, well there's nothing that proves that it's not, well nothing that proves that it doesn't because all studies so far have proven that these three amino acids are the ones that are the most used to recreate and build your muscles and repair them. Those are the three widely used. Yeah, marketing enforced itself on that and took advantage and created the BCAA or essentials. But you know what? If you take a look, you could find them in the essential foods that you're, you're, you're eating anyways. So why take more? You know, there's just a certain amount that you need per day in the servings, and that's all you need. But, again, if you take the molecule, and that's a little program I found. I built the molecules for you, just to give you a simple idea but of what I'm going to talk later. Is, this is how these amino acids look like. And you know what? Those three, you could find in the green peas. Yeah, those little green peas. When I know I'm going to do my exercise and I'm going to eat something or whatever, I try to include um, a good little quantity of green peas into my food because, you know, they have the amino acids from my muscles for that afternoon, which I'm going to do exercise. Just take a protein powder. It has everything anyways. But if I didn't want to take that protein powder, I could find those in the green peas. Uh, there's just highlight. I just want to show those molecules because I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, which one and how many of these contain a complete protein? I'm going to give you less than a minute so you don't have time to look it up on the web. But yeah, you could pause and look it up, but you know, just 
give yourself a test. See how many you're able to detect that have a complete protein in there while I take a drink of water. Yeah, I told you I'd give you a minute, but I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Because <laughs> I'm going into, I'm advancing in time and I'm trying to keep this video under 20 minutes. Well, in all those that you see there, the only one is the hemp seed. That has the complete protein. Not much of it, but it's complete. We have to mention it. Yeah, all those. Could you imagine? Tell yourself how many did you think had or that you weren't sure. That's how uncertain this thing is. In the plant base, we got quinoa. My mother always said, it tastes nothing. Uh, yeah, but you need it. It's a complete protein. And I see you eat white rice. So what the hell? White rice doesn't taste anything unless you take a white rice from something, you know, which has a little bit of taste. You put that, uh, you know, uh, stuff in Worcestershire, Worcester, <laughs> I'm not even going to get there, <laughs> into it. Uh, why not just do the same thing to your quinoa and, you know, mix it up with, you know, whatever you like. It's the same thing. Buckwheat. You know, like uh, buckwheat uh, pancakes. Now there's buckwheat uh, pasta, which is so good. Uh, you got uh, spiritulin, spiritulin in French, in English. Anyway, it's a green powder. It comes from uh, those uh, eggs, algs in uh, the ocean. That again is not mandated or protected or, you know, verified. So it's good to find a really good company that you make sure there's not much toxic in the powder that you're taking. But yeah, that's a complete protein. Chia seeds, uh, which we talked about before. Hemp seed, which we just talked about a minute ago. Soya in so many of its form, like tofu and oh, the Edamans. They're like big green beans, you know, like uh, green beans. And uh, but I eat those, but with you know, limited. I take them sometimes for when I'm doing a poke bowl, I mix it up because uh, estrogen they have, which we know that has a counter effect with testosterone. So I'm a little bit more careful of that. And then you got the other two, which I really don't, you know, eat. Uh, in the animal base, well, it's easy. Everything that's meat towards animal, uh, beef, uh, you know, uh, bison, pork, fish, poultry, chicken, uh, dane, uh, and dane, and dane, I'll come back to it. I just did my French video, so everything's French in my, in my, my head, uh, and dane, oh my god, I can't remember what in dane is in English. Anyways, milk, eggs, that comes from the animal. Damn, doesn't it bug you when you got a word just at the tip of your mouth and it just can't say it? chicken and that big uh, what we have uh, during uh, those time Thanksgiving that's a bird the big bird not big bird but that big bird <laughs> anyways so we know plant so uh, plant source is an incomplete protein you know we need to mix it up to be able to combine a meal to have a complete protein some say it's not necessary to combine it every meal but you know what? I agree to disagree with that because if I need 90 grams of complete protein in one day to be able to repair and do whatever I need to my body, my body needs every day, uh, you know what? I won't have it if I just take 30 grams of one protein in the morning and 30 grams of another protein in the afternoon and then have a complete protein at night. I'll be missing somewhere. So for me, I don't believe that. But nonetheless some will tell you it's okay where do we find uh, our protein most of it is on our muscles that's why we we'll always talk about the protein for muscles but it's not only there my friends it's our skin the skin is the biggest uh, organ that we have skin needs that protein is it 25 30 45 percent 90 percent protein even if it's 10 if it keeps your skin elastic, you know, the collagen to keep going and everything else that you need for your skin, why not make sure that you have it? Your bones, your nails, your organs, your hair, your eyes, a lot of other 
parts of your body we're all built of protein from one percent to another you know in each one one thing i didn't know it includes enzymes it helps your enzymes your hormones and helps the creation of your antibodies with something else in your body without going into a chemistry course like i said but that that's important proteins are also as uh, works as neurotransmitters you know that uh, from your brain to your fingers as moving your hand the liquid which i explained in um, salt which you needed uh, carrier of oxygen in your blood while well, was most important to keep every part of your body oxygenated so without going into great detail just skinning the surface of this you just could see how protein overall is so 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 important it's not only for muscles but it's for your whole body i can't face that enough yeah this is a full protein that i built in a program let me take you to that little program which uh, i had to find and then download here is a water molecule if you remember in my water uh, videos okay Yeah, let's just turn it has let's turn it so we could come on there you go so you can see it one oxygen molecule right here and two small little hydrogen this is a water molecule many millions of those will create one little drop of water we've talked about that in water in my water videos okay next one get rid of this next one is a complete protein and the teacher would probably be not happy with me okay since uh, I didn't get all the angles right you know but still you know it's there um, let's spin it a bit and let's take a look so at least you have an idea of you know the 3d how complicated this is so I didn't really bother um, to get to the point where I want to do I did this it's not complicated okay it's just there's four groups of food there is legume okay there is nuts there is grains and there is uh, cereals yeah cereals oh uh, anyways there, there's four groups okay which I'll get into a, into a minute now let's say for that day you decide to stay on salad and you think you got everything mixed but you're just taking salad, you know, vegan, uh, legumes. So during that day, let me press select, you will have this amino acid, you will have this amino acid, this one, and this one that you will have eaten in your salad during that day. Let's get rid of them. This is the amino acids left that you did not take during that day. If you did not eat and vary your food enough what will these amino acids be missing will create maybe some of these 90% of them or even 50% of them you'll need it for your skin for your skin to stay nice your hair your muscles your eyes even maybe your organs or your bones okay let's put it back the other day you go on the other factories cereals grains nuts so let's take those let's select those and part of this let's get rid of them these are the amino acids that are left that you did not take that day so that may be lacking to repair your muscles and something else in your body your oxygen and so on and so forth you know I could keep going with this and give you an example but you know what I think we're starting to understand you you sure got the picture that eating a complete protein in the plant-based world of food is so important to make sure that you mix it up and you still have an answer how do I mix it up yeah exactly uh, let me do an escape on this shut this down made a little chart I couldn't copy the ones on the web for copyrights but hey basically grains are composed barley cornmeal oats rice rye bread pasta wheat and so on the list goes on these lack and are deficient in this type of animal acid 
But if you look and you mix them up and you put a little bit of legumes in it, look at what this is high in lysine, in that type of amino acid. So one completes the other for you to have a complete protein. Let's go down. Nuts and seeds, they lack of something else too, but the legumes come and complete what is lacking in there. So you'll find on the web, until I create my own, a nice chart which will, you know, uh, give you circles. If you eat this, you need to get this. And if you eat that, you need to get this. And it's just a simple combination. It, uh, staring at that, uh, you know, uh, chart, uh, just uh, one minute, that's it. After that, it's so simple. If you want to have it, you just print it and, you know, have it down. I'll try in later videos to make sure that I build my own chart and um, you guys could have it from there. All right? So... I hope this clears and gives you a better idea of what a complete protein looks like. And if you do like this, please share uh, with anybody that may be vegetarian, vegetarian, or vegan. There's three different types. One is like meat, no meat. The other one is no meat or animal product. And vegan is all of the above, but no services from those animals and so forth. It's even, you know... Uh, more complicated okay so uh, uh, I will create more videos to come and explain more about uh, types of protein in the you know in the near future and why plant-based like Georges Larac in Quebec Canada which is a, a boxer professional boxer was able to put on a big percentage of muscles a lot faster than eating meat okay so everybody have yourself a great day